forcibly vaccinate your children and inject into their bloodstreams thermosol and a host of other toxins. What are you going to do? What are you going to do when they call for the confiscation of all your guns and, the, and the, this government sends out black water to collect them door to door just like they did in New Orleans? They took the guns from those white folk. When the majority of savage blacks were busy raping and pillaging and plundering, those white folks couldn't de- defend themselves anymore. And those minority blacks, civil blacks, they couldn't defend themselves either. What are they going to do? What are you going to do when they come and take your guns? Hmm? We have to decide what we're going to do before it happens. And you have to decide whether or not you have the right to own a gun. You have to decide whether or not you have a right to raise your children before God the way He says you ought to raise them, and not the state. You got to decide before it happens. I've made my decision. I want to read now from the preface of a great work that I'll be sending out in my Jesuit watch here by the end of this week. It's titled "Vaticanism Unmasked: A Romanism in the United States by a Puritan of the 19th Century." He writes this in 1877, quote, in his introduction, The papal church is a human institution which throws her sacerdotal sacerdotal robes over the whole civilized world. The pope usurps the authority of Jesus Christ, the supreme head of the church, militant on earth, and claims the right to rule the world in God's stead. This audacious claim is rigidly enforced in all parts of the world by military power, where the claim is disputed and where there are bayonets enough to ensure success at the command of the Vatican. In a republic like this, in 1877, diplomacy, strategy, intrigue, and all manner of fraud and deception are used according to circumstances until the civil power is under control after which obedience to the supreme pontiff is the law of the land. That's coming. It's already under the Pope's control, has been since no later than Theodore Roosevelt, and specifically FDR, and now we're going into the final phase of papal control. This arrangement is quite convenient inasmuch as there is but one source of authority, and nobody, and nobody is in danger by transgressing Christ's command, quote, render therefore under Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and under God the things which are God's, unquote. This is a logical sequence of papal supremacy and infallibility. Once established, one mind can rule the world from a single point to wit, the Vatican at Rome. You see, that's why the Pope was declared infallible in 1870. So that the Jesuits, behind that declaration of infallibility, could control the entire Vatican Empire by one man, the Pope. The Pope's bull of excommunication has more terrors in it than all the thunders of Sinai. Oh, pardon me. Uh, a syllabus ex cathedra is better authority in the mind of a papist than a, quote, thus saith the Lord, unquote, of the Bible. The Pope's bull of excommunication has more terrors in it than all the thunders of Sinai and the penalties of God's broken laws. These propositions may seem uh, extravagant to those who have never examined the subject, but the reader will find them sustained in the following pages. In the third decade of the present century, that's in the 1830s, when fitting for college under a Jesuit priest, the writer was thoroughly instructed in the aims, plans, and future prospects of the Roman hierarchy in this country, as well as in the doctrines of the Papal Church. During the last 50 years, we have studied the nature and watched the progress of Romanism in this republic, with intense interest, hoping to see some abler pen lay open its real character and designs to Protestants of the 19th century. In reading the histories of 18 centuries, it is, pardon me, it is, it has become more and more apparent that the claims of the Vatican to infallibility, to universal dominion, to an unbroken line of succession from the apostles, to the power of absolution from sin through time and eternity, are one and all stupendous humbugs and the greatest frauds ever palmed off upon the human race. To establish these blasphemous claims in these United States and territories and upon this continent is the work of the present century, that's the 1800s, by the Roman hierarchy to its cardinals, bishops, and priests, and has been openly and boldly avowed by them from time to time. 
It is the design of this pamphlet to lay open the true character of the institution which purposes to substitute despotism for republicanism in this country, and we have condensed the proofs from history so as to bring them within the reach of the Protestant masses. Therefore, it shall be too late to resist, before it shall be too late to resist the encroachments of the papal power. The histories of which we are chiefly indebted are Milman's Latin Christianity, quote unquote, including the numerous authors quoted by him, both Protestant and papal, to, quote, the period of the Reformation by Hauser, and quote, to the Huguenots in France by the revoca- after the revocation of Edict of Nantes by Samuel Smiles. I have books from Samuel Smiles. To the Albanese history of the Reformation in the 16th century. That's a classic that you all should have for your library, by the way. And, quote, a synopsis of Popery as it was and as it is by William Hogan, formerly a Roman Catholic priest, and I have it, and I've read it on this broadcast several times. After the first three centuries of the Christian era, Satan was permitted to take possession of the church as he, as he was permitted to take Job in hand more than 1,500 years before. The pure gold of Christianity was soon turned buried in the rubbish of sacerdotal religion, and Christians were well nigh smothered into silence for more than a decade of centuries. That's right, that's called the Dark Ages, when the Bible was forbidden to be circulated throughout Europe. But Jesus Christ had said of his his church, not the popes, quote, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, unquote. And after Satan had ample time to extinguish it, God arose in his power, dug out of that mountain of rubbish, the ore separated the gold from the dross in his great refining of free discussion and set the current in another direction. John Wycliffe, John Huss, Jerome of Prague, Martin Luther, Melanchthon, Zwingli, and others were evidences that the great principles of biblical Christianity yet lived. Luther began the Reformation by attacking the papal system, first in its corrupt practices, and second in its doctrines. Pope Leo X flattered, threatened, raged, and bellowed in turn. His bulls were issued and served as sandpaper to burnish the gold, which had become dim by long disuse until all Germany was lighted up with gospel fires. Luther, armed with the Bible, went out to the battle to battle with the supreme pontiff and his legates as David with his sling and smooth stones gave battle to Goliath and the Philistines. The one was a moral and the other physical power with an almighty arm to guide each. Christendom had two systems of religion, Christianity and hierarchism, from which to choose. God is the author of the first, which is the only system that embraces human salvation. The priest is the author of the second, which is the system we shall lay open in this pamphlet as delineated in history. In the hierarchical system, ecclesiastical penance was substituted for Christian repentance in Christianity. The translation of the New Testament was altered to conform to this counterfeit of a great fundamental principle in Christianity which substituted the Roman pontiff for Jesus Christ and placed the priest between the Creator and His creatures. In the Protestant Bible, repentance is an exercise of the heart. That's the AV 6 and 11 Bible. Contrition for sin against God and an act towards God. In the Jesuit Douay Testament, Penance is substituted for repentance, contrary to the true rendering of the original Greek. This is the fundamental difference between Protestantism and papacy. Which is it going to be? Repentance or penance? We shall show that the Roman Catholic Church is the only institution in this world that claims infallibility and that it is, of all others, the most corrupt, ungodly, and despotic and consequently it is no more entitled to the character of Catholicity than Satan to it than Satan it to that of saint. We also propose to show from its own history that it has never reformed, that its character has been essentially the same for the last fourteen centuries, that when modified for it in its professions in all at all in any country, it has been only while getting possession of the civil power, like it has today as now in this republic, and that the civil power, when once in its hands, has always been used to smother Christianity and force Christians, Bible-believing Christians, into obedience to the demands of the Vatican, unquote. The author, Cambridge, Massachusetts, 1877.